Oh, welcome back. Barrel has not only hurt our homes, properties, livelihoods, it's also taken a toll on our emotions. So joining me to discuss how hurricanes and major storms can trigger unhealthy emotions is clinical psychologist and chief clinical officer of Free Spira, Dr. Robert Kyler. Good morning. Thanks so much for Good coming. Good morning. In. Yeah, I mean, I asked you when we were sitting here in the commercial break how you're doing, how your house is doing. House was okay. Fortunately, we had a tree that fell down about two months ago instead of falling during the storm, so we got it taken care of. Oh, that's good. Before. Because, yeah, because like so many people, it could have fallen during this. Yeah, we were fortunate to have our power back within about a day, so we're among the lucky. Yeah, you know, I mean, we know Houston is is no stranger to these severe weather events. Um, and what it reminds me of is that string of flooding whenever we had the Memorial Day flood, the tax day flood, and we were flooding over and over and over. It almost seems like we're kind of in that cycle with a different type yeah. of storm. Yeah. I mean, talk about um, how these storms can take a psychological toll on us. Well, the uncertainty, the unpredictability, you know, this storm blew up rapidly. It was not really expected to come here, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, it was in our lap. And so the uncertainty uh, and, and rapidity, I, I think, is one thing that takes hold. Like we have a rainstorm, and then all of a sudden the streets are flooded and your car is flooded out. Yeah. So I, I think that that sense of um, unpredictability is something that really does ramp up, ramp up the anxiety. Right. And I mean, you can feel it even as people are able to post on social media. You know, they might not have power in their house, but they're able to get on their phones. And OK, they're anxious, but it's also turned into they're angry. I mean, you Absolutely. know, to exactly. I mean, so can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, it's sort of it's sort of difficult to tell somebody when you have power and they don't yeah. and they're hot that, OK, they're working as fast as they can. It's it's almost like it sounds like you're gaslighting them. It's like we're not, but uh, you know, sort of how people can sort of work through some of that when they're in it. Well, I think one thing that's important to remember is that as horrible as these things are, they are temporary, and it can be really helpful to go back to the last really bad time and to remember there was an end point to it and things got back to normal. Mm -hmm. Because in the midst of it, it seems like it goes on forever, particularly if you're scared, if you're hot, if you're edgy, if you're angry. Yeah, I mean, and it seems like the last event was so recent. I mean, in terms of power outages and Absolutely. storm damage was just in May. But talk about then, so once everything, you know, we get all the power back, anticipatory anxiety, that's a thing. What do you mean, sort of, are, you're already thinking about bad things happening? Well, one thing that happens is when you have a traumatic event, the mind and body really remember it vividly. And when you have even little glimmers of the new event coming, like yesterday's lightning storm, right. yes. my heart was racing. I was looking at the lights, waiting for them to go off. That's kind of an example of how we get geared up when there's a reminder of an event uh, and, and we're, we're dreading the possibility that could happen again. Yeah, I mean, I feel like so many people who never really thought of themselves as having PTSD. I mean, we think of that in, in you know, violent situations or veterans returning from war. Yeah. But you've seen like people with PTSD and trauma from storms like this. I grew up in New Orleans. And so, you know, Katrina had massive mm -hmm. impact. And one of the things that I think it's important to talk about is that all of us are stressed out. For most people, that stress will tend to even out over time. We get concerned about PTSD developing after three to six months where it's not settling down. Some of the key things we get concerned about are sleep problems, nightmares, being on edge, being what we call hypervigilant, which is scanning the world for danger. Mm -hmm. uh, it affects mood, irritability. It leads to depression very readily. The other thing that's a real concern uh, is that understandably people look for ways to numb themselves and uh -huh. so it creates a risk for people to overdrink or use other substances which then yeah. makes the situation worse. Right, yeah, I mean and people stuck at home not being able to go anywhere in the heat, yeah you could see where that could become a real problem. Yeah. So how can people work on coping then? One of the things that's important is when you're in the midst of this is to pace yourself. There's a lot of stuff to be done. It is useful to do things that you can accomplish and get done and to say, I fixed something. 
but it's important not to go on adrenaline overdrive, to take time, to settle, to rest. I heard you a little bit earlier, go to a cooling center, reach out for support. Um, connection is also a really important hedge against developing this kind of trauma. Uh -huh. So the people that we're close to, that we, that we love, it, it's those, that sense of community connection and support, uh, even when things are awful, that helps many of us really kind of get through very difficult circumstances. Yeah, and not isolating yourself if you're yes. able to like be around family. Yeah. And Isolation is a, is a real, real uh, uh, important aggravator of, uh -huh. of the kind of trauma that, that sets in after events like this. All right, some, some really important information, good things to keep in mind, and that all of this will end, and we hope it will end very soon. We do. All right, Dr. Robert Kyler, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me.